Lulu's Temple is a platformer with a central gimmick based around light and the lack thereof. The player carries a torch and can light torches in the pyramid for more light, but it will never be enough. Use only that light and you will blunder into hazards in the dark. Fortunately, your explorer can hurl his torch ahead to light the path before him, and he even has a little scarab helper to fetch it for him. Now, mastering the torch is the key to finishing Lulu's temple. Aside from flinging the torch to ignite distant light sources, you'll also use it to trigger traps and solve certain puzzles. But being apart from your torch carries risk. Some monsters will exploit your vulnerability and only attack you in the dark, while others can grab your dropped torch and run away with it. The most remarkable part about Lulu's Temple might be how creepy the game is, despite, or maybe because of, its MSX throwback graphics. The slightly dissonant music and sound effects are properly ominous, and the monster designs are properly weird. Whether it's the glow of red eyes in the darkness above you, or the guttural battle cry of a giant scorpion bearing down on you, there are plenty of memorably spooky moments. A young woman named Ara awakens in a box in a vast wasteland with only one clear memory, her father telling her to find and destroy a legendary artifact before it causes any more trouble. So begins the Amber Throne, a semi-open world indie RPG. Ara has certain storyline objectives to complete, but the player gets a fair amount of leeway in how she reaches each one of them. It's an intentional design choice, as the narrative is based more on atmosphere than on a hard linear plot. On her journeys, Ara will encounter various tribes who have a history with the titular throne and learn what became of them, while also learning of an inhuman force that already controls much of the world and has designs on the throne. The game's main selling point is certainly its hand-drawn aesthetic, but the combat system, while still pretty old school, has some interesting quirks. Enemies will react to certain attacks, changing their stats or attack patterns. Winning some of the harder fights depends on figuring out which attacks to use on which enemies to limit their strength. Glyph is a 3D platformer collectathon. The basic gameplay loop should be familiar to anyone who remembers the heyday of such games. Complete levels to unlock new levels while slowly advancing toward the end game. Each of Glyph's levels contains keys, which must be collected to finish the level, along with coins, gems, and artifacts used to unlock new hubs and levels in the overworld. Mechanically, Glyph is pretty straightforward. Your little robot Scarab has a pretty standard suite of moves, including a double jump, a short-range glide, and a ground pound that pops Glyph into the air for yet another jump. But the basic application of these moves will only get you so far. Completing the more technically difficult levels requires understanding how to break those mechanics. An example, unlike most games where the player character needs to be standing on firm ground to jump, the main character here has a jump that is charged by touching any safe surface and can then be immediately used. This lets the player pull off some interesting moves, such as rolling straight up the side of a tall object or bouncing from one parallel surface to another. Glyph is a pretty substantial game at that, with a lot of levels to tackle. Expect to take anywhere from 5 to 15 hours, depending on whether you head straight for the final level or tackle each level in turn.